what we've done up to now, we relied on the vibration of electron, which is very, very minimal. It's absolutely insignificant compared to the total energy. But that's all we knew. Going into understanding the plasma, as you've been through with us over the past year, two years, and other teaching, you came to understand we went through a specific process where we do not need the copper wire in a matter state. We start making a more efficient use of this copper. How do you make it more efficient? In the present physics, in the present time of electronics, they tell you and they talk about superconductors and super resistors and everything super that can carry the energy with a minimum loss from A to B. So what happened? Our dream has been to create the minimum loss between these two, using and understanding only the vibration of the electron. But in the current time, in the past few years, and as we put for example, the first signs of creation of superconductors on the internet as a Coca-Cola bottle some 10 years ago, we start raising interest in other people, how this thing works and what it is. So what we did, we still took the same copper, but we brought the superconductivity from this wire itself, not from outside. If you go and buy nanomaterial, you want to coat this wire with nanomaterial, you have to buy a nanomaterial separate, glue it, or do something else that it can create or have a layer of nano layer on it. The way I set up to do it, being a nuclear physicist, understanding in the nuclear structure, we can separate the atoms in a much easier way than what we've been told. So, I initially used caustic, and then electric currents, and then other bits over time. So what we've done, if you look here, if they were the atoms connected to each other in the structure of the copper, like this, we allow them to be where they are, but we created a very, very special condition. Very, very special condition. And that special condition was that in a matter state, if you heat the wire, it will melt. If you heat the molten metal further, it will evaporate. The trick was to create a condition that you don't melt the wire, and the minute the evaporation as a gas of copper created, you can reduce it, that it can pull itself back. That was a trick. To now, to create a nanomaterial in a different shape or form, which was allowing to create nano layers of the metal itself, of the copper itself. So what happens now? We managed to bring them back to be in touch with the copper, but still you see separated according to the gravitational magnetic field. Understanding that even in a matter state, each structure has its own, what do you call, gravitational magnetic field. It's like Earth. It has a South Pole entry and it has a North Pole exit. Every single cell in this structure is the same. Every nanomaterial is the same. And when you do this, you find out here, due to a stronger gravitational magnetic field and less magnetical field, which is repulsion, the matter stays more compact. If you reduce the gravitational field strength in respect to the copper and increase the magnetical, which is repulsion, 
then you get exactly the same state as you get with two magnets. If you have a north pole and a south pole, or if you have a north pole and a north pole, or south pole and a south pole, a plasma behaves exactly like a magnet. It has polarity. It's the sun. If you look at the, one of these, you see the sun. You see the earth. Earth is a plasma too. So what it is, the gravitational magnetic field between the two creates a gap, a distance where they can coexist with no problem. The gravitational magnetic field between the earth and the sun dictates the position of the earth in respect to the sun. It's the same with your nano layers on top. Because don't forget the bound and the binding of gravitational magnetic field on a wire is stronger, so the nanomaterial behaves as a satellite. And what happens is that now you have put this wire here. When you give it the right heat and the right condition, you create nano layers. But if you look, the nano layers are positioned magnetic gravitationally in respect to each other, where magnetical field is bigger, stronger, gravitational less compared to before. So now what you have is you have a spectrum here of nanomaterial flow. Superconductivity where there is the orange line. Because now you have less resistance the compact, so the material behaves as a superconductor. So what it was, it was to heat the material high enough in a very short span, very rapid, that it releases itself from a matter state solid to nano state solid. And the proof of that was that we could see, if you look from above, a black line. The black line was the indication of nanomaterial. Because on the top surface of these nano layers, when you look on the top, being black means they absorb every radiation which comes to the wire. If you look, this is a nano coated material and it's totally black. Every single wire is black, which means is totally nano-layered. Now, this was half of the problem. So, the next problem comes, how can we release these nano-entities to become a free plasma, free sun? Because at this moment, the way they are, they are still connected to each other in one way or another to the main copper line. So, in the process today, we teach you how to do it. All the Keshe Foundation supporters around the world have been doing it for a long time. But because we know there is a huge number of new people online and are here to learn for the first time about evolution of the plasma, we go through every step one by one. Those are who are advanced, unfortunately, you all have to wait till Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday that you can collect, collect your wires, that you get something, then you'll be happy. But you've got to understand the progress of technology this time is with us, amongst us, and all of us will be going one step. So in time, we have to learn and know, understand what we are doing. So what happened is that we managed to create, ooh, come back here. We managed to create a nano layer. But this nano layer is still a stock to the copper. What are we going to do? What is our position? The next step was to be able to release every single atom. You're leaving us? Sure. 
was to make sure that we can create an independent entity from these nano layers. When you see a nano layer, when you see a black coated wire, which is of its own, don't forget this nanomaterial here <coughs> is atomic structure of the copper itself. It hasn't been coated. <coughs> As we heated it the right way, we'll teach you how, we managed to release the top layer into open freedom, but partially connected. For you to see these black entities on the wire, copper wire, <coughs> needs at least 30, 40,000 nano layers. So, <coughs> when you have the copper wire, and when you see it in black, coated, that's 30, 40,000 layers. That <coughs> every, every gravitational magnetic field rays, energy, which enters or comes down from the atmosphere to the wire, the energy gets trapped in these gaps. And because they get trapped, they don't reflect back, and the material looks black to you. This is one of the signs of superconductivity, absorption of all the material, all the energies. So when you measure across the nanomaterial here, you get 20 megawatt of resistance, me mega ohm of resistance. But when you put current through this nanolayer, because there is no physical electron to resist it, is superconductivity. It's the first time man has managed to produce superconductive materials at room temperature and pressure. This has been the biggest problem in the world of science for a long time, to create superconductors at room temperature. Now we have it, and the process takes a few hours and less than a few cents.